Good day, friends. This is um, the Healer and the Dreamer Astrology. We're doing conversations with Ina and Martin. This is a new uh, video series that we have on um, C.J. Jung's Eon, Research into the Phenomenology of the Self, uh, the Ego. And uh, today I have my great friend, Ina, um, and um, we're really excited to start with you with this uh, new series. How are you doing, Ina? Doing great, Martin. I am also quite excited for today's uh, recording and to see where it takes us, um, not just because uh, this is the first time, uh, but because finally we, we're going to attempt to de debunk the misconceptions of various topics related to the development of our psyche. Mm, that's exciting. So um, just to uh, introduce you, uh, Ina and I have been working for about a year and uh, we've been uh, diving deep into dream work and astrology. And so um, maybe you tell our viewers how we got started and, and what's your experience of working with me? Well, uh, you got me when I was um, uh, in a pretty bad state and I didn't know what was going on. And I was poking around and looking for different uh, solutions to uh, resolving my uh, dejections, I guess I would call it. And then uh, I listened to one of your presentations and I really liked what you were talking about. And I reached out to you, uh, I think the same night, I think I sent you an email and I said, okay, I definitely want to see the, understand the astrology from the soul level and the soul development. And what is this uh, new uh, perspective of understanding the soul from the astrological part? And um, we went quite deep on our first session. And I remember I just, right at the end of it, I just started crying because you literally saw the depth of my heart that I could not even put it in the better words. It was amazing. It was beautiful. And, uh, well, you know, <laughs> here, here we are a year later. Here we are, um, indeed, indeed, indeed. And so for a little while now, we've been talking about uh, doing some sharing together. Uh, you're a, you're a, a um, multi-talented healer yourself. You do hypnotism and Reiki and many different modalities. So it's really interesting to get your perspective on the work. And um, so... You came up with the, the reason why we went into Eon is because you came up with a question uh, that you were formulating. And so we're going to address that. So maybe I'll let you articulate what the question is. You are incredibly diplomatic and soft. <laughs> no, what happened was <laughs> I decided to whip my ego and come from a very negative standpoint and just rip myself to shred. And you kindly stopped me and said, perhaps a kinder approach would be nice. And perhaps my whole concept of the ego should not be so um, abrupt and aggressive. And I should come with uh, love and kindness, uh, a.k.a. everything I tell my own clients to do <laughs> and um, actually settle in. And understand the beauty and the process of the ego and the ego development and what is healthy ego and what is unhealthy ego. And I right away, uh, as we start, we, we kept talking about it saying, Martin, we have to record this because people need to know the difference, right? We don't know what is really a healthy ego looks like. We don't know what's unhealthy. How do we differentiate one from the other? And um, so here we are. That's Martin. very, very cool. That's very cool. So, so, so then that in that chat that we were having, I, I, wow. I, I went into the story of, you know, what is our modern conception of ego and, and right. what are some of the, and then I was telling you that uh, um, about um, the the theosophical and anthroposophical um um, discussion on the ego that we see 
in modern spirituality, which is really a concept of ego that's inherited from Eastern religion. And so, and uh, we talked about Bavlatsky and, and Steiner and, and the evolution of this concept of ego as being a bad thing. Correct. Um, so ego being, you know, what uh, in, in Vedic thought, it's the uh, false ego or ahankara that's the problem. And real ego is a is an attitude uh, of, you know, consciousness that is more of a devotional attitude, whereas the false ego claims proprietorship over everything that he or she does and so that's kind of the, the 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 vedic concept now this vedic concept was brought out by madame blavatsky who was one of the really powerful mystics of the 19th and the early 20th century um so she's the one who dusted out of the mud balls astrology and mysticism and she brought in a lot of christianity and and eastern philosophy into a system that is called theosophy and this still is very much the, the prominent um uh, ideas in our uh, modern spirituality we really the ideas you know what we read in Eckhart Tolle uh, and 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 the such uh, are are the same ideas that Bavlatsky has expounded upon and then after that Annie Besant and Krishnamurti and then we had uh, um, Steiner, but also um, all kinds of different people. And many astrologers uh, um, gain inspiration from Plavatsky. And so then we have a, a theosophical kind of astrology uh, coming into uh, Dane Rudyard and the humanistic. And so then we have this interesting conception of ego as being a bad thing and how we need to transcend the ego. So that's kind of the predominant, am I right on that? Absolutely, you're right on, right on. That's exactly how we got where we are, for sure. So then, so then, 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 then Jung's definition of ego is quite different. And and so then understanding so so Jung came from the perspective of a of a psychoanalyst of a of a psychologist of a psychiatrist and Jung's ideas you know Jung was born in eighteen seventy five so just when Bavlatsky was doing her thing you know and there was this you know spiritual revolution. You know, what a lot of people don't understand is Jung started right off the bat in his work when he was studying to become a psychiatrist. His master's thesis, his doc doctoral thesis, was made on the so-called, the the, the 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 pathology of the so-called occult phenomena. Mm -hmm. And so he made a study of table turning and seances. And, and, and so that was his first, that was his beginning point into and and if you read memories dreams and reflections you see his dreams and his evolution of his ideas so he was very much concerned with what was going on in these occult phenomena so he was steeped into that uh, and even early on in his career when he started corresponding with with freud they talked together about astrology and he even got his first chart read by a Freudian astrologer. So, so at the very beginning of psychology, already astrology was really key to his work. And as the, his work evolved, especially in the Red Book and his more personal work, you see the influence of it, but also in Symbols of Transformation, and in the next book that comes after that, where he talks about the personality types and, you know, intuitive, 
um, sensation, feeling, and uh, um, thinking types. You know, so that's the same as the four elements. So I'm digressing here, but uh, so the ego uh, became central to his, his, his concepts. And so he was concerned for him, psychology, psychiatry was the science of the soul. Psyche means soul. And so psychology to him was the science of the soul. And he was concerned with curing the soul. So one, uh, you know, from, you know, what we call, you know, neurosis and, and, and psychosis and all of the, you know, and back then we, they used the word hysteria. Now we have so many different branches of hysteria and we don't use hysteria anymore, but a lot of the hysterical types of symptoms have manifested themselves into modern disease like uh, ADHD and all of those things, they're all hysterical kind of, you know, where they don't make sense to the doctor himself. You know, it's hysterical. It's the soul that's crazy, you know, and how do we cure the soul? So that was Jung's main focus. And he said that one of the fairest, really most essential tenant of Jungian psychology was that um, in order to heal the soul, you first have to make the ego strong. You have to make the ego into a safe container for the personality. And so, so that's really departs a lot, you know? And so that's why we have such a hard time in modern times, you know, to get rid of the ego means to get rid of this healthy sense of self. So then we have a, a, a paradox there where, and a confusion when we refuse the ego's calling to become well-defined as a personality. And that makes for um, the process of healing the soul to be really difficult. And so right in that, you know, philosophical point there lies the great difference between Jung's work and what we attempt to do in the new age. Did that make sense to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so then let's go into the, to, 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 to the ego a little more and bring out. So this book, uh, Eon mm -hmm. is a volume. Um, hello. It is volume. Uh, it's volume nine, part one, okay, uh, yeah. part two, um, um, of the collected works, and um, so I'll show you a little picture of um, what Eon is, which is really fascinating, and so Eon. Come on, Eon. Mm -hmm is the god of perpetual time, eternity, and the zodiac. Eon, the god of the ages, and this, so this is the picture of God, of, the, of Eon, the god of the ages, in the celestial sphere decorated with the zodiac. So Eon is, you know, predominantly a, 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 a or, or importantly, a very important, astrological text that describes the age of Pisces. Um, uh, so, so we have the zodiacal sign, then we have the uh, green tree and a, you know, a, 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 a dead tree, dismantled tree, summer and winter, and then we have Gaia and the four seasons and the god of um, perpetual time, eternity, and the zodiac. So that's where the name of Eon comes from. And it's also um, in Greek philosophy, in Roman philosophy, and in this early Christians, the Gnostics. The Gnostics, mm -hmm. God was also Eon. So then, so then in, um, in Eon, in the later parts of Eon, uh, Jung goes deeply into the symbolism of the Piscean age. 
I couldn't oh. actually help on the image that you just shared. I couldn't help but notice that he has his hand uh, in the picture uh, right on Pisces. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, very, oh. very interesting. I'm sure I'm sure the artist whoever <laughs> drew it had that uh, had that in mind. I guess if they would be drawing it today, it would be on the Aquarius as we're stepping into the age of Aquarius. Right, right, right. Do you have any uh, history yourself in uh, studying Jung? Um, well, only self-study and a lot of study through you with your help. As you guiding me, as I go through my own process, you always give me in the small bits and pieces um, uh, just to just to see how much deeper I can go in my own process. Uh, but in terms of studying on my own, no, but I have had uh, a fair share of my own uh, psychoanalysis sessions where I've, I'm pretty comfortable now with uh, understanding the development of the soul and, and all aspects of ourselves. Well, Jung's work has evolved greatly through the ages and, and, you know, through the age, you know, Jung left in 1962 and then there was a number of people, you know, Mary Louise von Franz and, and, um, and, and other people who took his work into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And really a lot of what we do is informed, you know, by Jung's work. Um, one of the principal things that I like to do or that I see one of my goals is to one to you know get people to take serious astrology seriously of course uh, two it is to develop a dream practice and support you in that way and three is to get people to actually start studying Jung directly um, and and that is you know and so you know that's why I refer to these books and I help people encourage them to read them and for those who are interested. Uh, in understanding the age of Aquarius and the age of Pisces, uh, Eon is a fabulous uh, book. But Eon starts the first four chapters are the ego, the shadow, the sizigi, so the animus and the anima, and chapter four is the self. Then chapter five is Christ as a symbol of the self. So we're going to start with the ego today. And then uh, in subsequent week here, we'll go through the shadow. So these are basic concepts of union psychology, real basis. Um, and so here we are talking about uh, the ego. So so how did that do? How is that for an introduction, my dear? I love it. I, I think that... Um... I guess the way we should look at understanding the ego, the self, animus and anima, the shadow are would be the different aspect of ourselves, right? That make us whole. Yes, or or to use like a, you know real Jungian language, it's the archetypal structure of the self. The archetypal structure. Of of yourself okay yeah it's the it's or or Jung uses the word he says the psychic economy psychic economy mm -hmm. so he uses a different the, archetypal that takes within our psyche and essentially shows up as a whole in us as in the process of individuation correct exactly so so you know we're 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 we're, we're familiar with this concept of archetypes and 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 we also con we, we introduced with with the sim or the with the concept of instinct, you know right. what are instinctual nature. So mm -hmm. archetypes and instinct are the same thing, mm -hmm. you know. So so an animal is born with an instinctual nature, which is really in essence archetypal. It's within it's within the psyche of the of the animal to you know you know and there's no thinking you know it's mm -hmm. instinctual they know the dance they know everything about who they are instinctually gotcha. that's so that's the archetypal structure the psychic structure. 
So then the basic psychic structure is to start with is the ego. Correct. So so the ego is, you know, so Jung describes the ego as the center of my consciousness, what I'm aware of. So he uses the sentence here. Um, I'm going to need a little light. Mark, would it be fair to say it's an external layer of ourselves or is it um, not fair to call that? Well, here, this is, you know, right from the, from, from his own, so we understand the ego as the complex factor to which all consciousness comments are related. It forms, as it were, the center of the field of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And in so far as this comprises the empirical personality, the ego is the subject of all personal acts of consciousness. The relations of a psychic content to the ego forms the criteria of its consciousness. For no content can be conscious unless it is unless it is represented to a subject. So the ego is my sense of I. If I'm conscious of it, that's my ego. When, you know, when I say... A response to whichever, how my I responses to it. And everything that relates to me... Mm -hmm as an individual and that I'm conscious of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is where my ego is centered that's the center of my personality does that make sense sure sure so everything is related everything that I'm conscious of that I am you know that that you know so so in astrology we have the symbol of the sun yes oh and and so astrology is mandalas right it's mm -hmm. all you know it's a mandala and that mandala the very basic of the mandala is the center and the circumference of the mandala so we have the ego at the center so the ego is what I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. And so then when we study Jungian psychology and astrology, so this mandala, the center being the ego, and the circumference again around it, that's the world that we live in. And so then in Jungian psychology, we learn two words. And we need to do a whole video on just those two words, but the conscious and the unconscious. Correct. So what I am conscious of is that little dot. Right. And what I'm unconscious of is the great big world that I'm around, you know, and I'm conscious of some of it. Mm -hmm. But the process of individuation is to become conscious of all of it. So then the astrology, the astrological mandala is a map of the psyche and the center is the ego. And the more we become aware of what we are unconsciously, we become related to what the self is. So the ego is the small circle and the self is the large circle. Right. And so then then this psyche is mapped by the zodiac in a very intricate way. So then it becomes a map of the psyche. And so does that make sense? Sure. So what you're saying is, is that if I am completely um, 
swaddled in my eye. I will only trust and believe what is conscious. And without to me being understanding the um, the bigger circle, which is the astrological circle that it surrounds me, if I'm not going to be tapping into the unconsciousness of my development, I will always be swaddled and that prevents my development uh, because I'm not tapping into the unconscious aspects of my um whole as a system right because that's what astrology seems to does it taps into the unconsciousness um of the world of the ego right um and getting us closer closer into the self by you know understanding the surroundings of each individual ego as we are right. as a human right because you obviously you will have your astrological chart, I will have my astrological chart, and how um, how willing am I to loosen up my swaddle in order for me to understand the self, the concept of the self, rather than being stuck in the concept of the I. So when right. that's unhealthy, would you say that this is when I um, I'm stuck in my I without understanding the self? Well, that's the plight of the modern man. Okay. And so then, then what Jung did is he studied the evolution of the human psyche. So up till up till the you know the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. the 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 relationship between ego and the world of magic or in the world of the unconscious was systemized into processes that were accessible you know we you know the, the the great religions the mystical practices you know we interacted with the self as the god principle from the ego and the ego was always in service to something greater than itself you know so that's the center the, the center and the circle you know the circle is in service to the whole so only with you know with with the the rising of modern science and in and, and you know the the descartes you know saying i think therefore i am and the empowerment of consciousness as the great accomplishment of what was called at the time, the enlightenment. The enlightenment became man rising above nature to control nature. And that's where this great experiment of the modern times started happening where man became the ruler and whatever it could not understand rationally with its mind, whatever was not grounded in facts, was counted as unreal or not to be proven. Therefore, human humanity threw away all of the psychic structures that were built for thousands of years how man instinctually related to the unconscious, we became dissociated from that. And because of that, then psychology had to be born that, to heal the problems of the soul that were created by a dissociation with the magical spiritual world. So now we see in our in our modern world, we're using psychology and these old ancient practices to bring back soul again, because we're realizing that, yes, we're a very rational society, but we've taken rational rationality and materialism to a point of insanity, and we've lost our way. And we disregard all of these incredible systems. You know, so Jung looked at religions as systems 
of psychic hygiene who got us related to the self in a healthy way. And so then for Jung, essentially psychology was a process of healing the soul. That, that, make, that makes sense, huh? Yes. That was golden. That was golden. Cool. That was cool. Golden. <laughs> cool, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Any questions <laughs> emerge from that? Oh, I'm, I'm good. I just hope our listeners really heard what you just said. <laughs> So then, so then, then how we interrelate with psyche, then what becomes clear is that the ego is related to the self in a way of service. So that when we have psychological problems, we call them mental health issues. Sure. And, you know, Jung at one point, he says, you know, if you believe that psychological illnesses are genetic and they are based on the body, they are uh, physiological, says if you think like that, you're in the 19th century. Because, and, and so the major... Oh in studying neurosis and psychosis. So you have to understand Jung's first job was in a psychiatric hospital, the most famous psych psychiatric hospital of that time that was run by Eugene Bleuler. So the, the, uh, the Berglosi Mental Hospital in Zurich, that was, he was an assistant to Eugene Bleuler, who was one of the leaders of psychotherapy and in that work, and in his friendship for Freud, Jung looked at dream analysis as a way of curing the soul. And he worked with, you know, psychotics and, 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 and hysterical client, clients who were completely broken down and could not relate to the world. And he started having huge success using these techniques that he developed, dream analysis and analysis in conjunction with Freud. That was the early days of psychology. And in the early days of psychology, it was really the science of the soul. Now, Freud and Jung split up because Freud was too attached to his own ideology. Um, and, and, and Jung became more intensely connected one with dream analysis but also his studies of mysticism and especially his studies of alchemy and astrology informed and became really the philosophical foundation for the new age as a counterbalance to theosophy and so now what we're seeing as the pre predominating um, philosophy of our times in terms of healing is in two poles, the theosophical poles of Blavatsky and, and uh, you know, and the modern representatives of that kind of, uh, you know, new age. And then there's the union aspects and they kind of, been thrown into a blender you know that has made what you know and so so then our job is to like kind of untangle the mess and so that's why going back to Jung and studying Jung directly and 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 you know and if we think about what Jung has contributed in terms of you know the the, the in my in my mind synchronicity you know, that was one of Jung's contribution. And without synchronicity, there's no scientific basis to astrology or to any of the practices that we do. You know, so synchronicity, but, you know, things that have become, you know, commonplace, you know, the shadow, uh, the conscious and the unconscious, the four functions, uh, introvert, extrovert, um, all of this terminology, the Briggs and Myers test, all of that, 
that was all Jung's work, you know. So we, you know, but modern psychology has chosen to return to a 19th century model, very much so under the control of the pharmaceuticals, because then you can make money this way and you can create medicines that kind of suppress the ailment without really approaching it psychologically. So really this mental health movement or struggle, it cannot be fixed by medicine, by, by pharmaceuticals. It only can be fixed by analysis and by the work of the soul and by bringing about a healthy relationship between the ego and the self in an aspect of servitude. Absolutely. Devotional. It sounds like you just described how there is a streamline of creating an unhealthy ego and how we perceive that we can take a pill that will you know disconnect me from what i'm dejected from and and then i can move on with my day and, and still control what's happening in my life but again this does not actually allow me to stop taking the pill and it does not allow me to go and get um connected with my true self that lies in my unconsciousness because i am again i'm streamlined in a very specific current how the society is moving that does not allow me to explore because frankly i have no time and and so then this is cartesian materialistic scientific you know scientific materialism which leads our society you know, and defines, you know, and then it's supported by by mass media and technology. Yeah. And so 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 then, you know, this is what Jung said about mental illness, you know, psychological illness, neurosis, hysteria, psychosis, you know, is is that it is the soul rebelling against consciousness. So the soul rebels against consciousness and stand and, up for itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a little spoiled child. Mm -hmm. We become compulsive. We act like a spoiled child. We actually become taken over by the shadow because really this scientific materialism is only a shadow of what the real human potential is. And so then... You know, so then the work of facing the shadow, and so that's going to be our next uh, uh, chapter in our exploration, is how uh, do we integrate the shadow? But, you know, and so that will be our next video, but any more questions that you may have about, you know, the ego and, and how to um, develop a healthy ego? Well, the way I'm understanding that developing the healthy ego is getting connected to other archetypes within our unconsciousness um, so we can get out of our um, a solidified concept of an I, uh, whatever that I is for each individual person. And then um, and what we have named so far is how we got into the unhealthy ego that is not willing to play and the only time where it can actually get into perhaps uh, somewhat close to um, becoming healthy is actually experiencing psychosis so 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 a psychosis is the 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 craziness of our time mm -hmm. attacking the weak ego and overwhelming it Mm -hmm. So then we have hysteria, we have neurosis is a is a constant harassing of unconscious contents that want to be integrated, but they're not allowed into consciousness, so they create tension. So then first we have to strengthen the ego, the sense of self. Mm -hmm. So then then in our in our day and age, we call those processes a spiritual practice. So we're threatening the ego. So a creative practice, a writing practice, we are strengthening our sense of self. 
you know, right. like the 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 artist way by Julia Cameron, you know, you do three pages every morning and the practice of writing down, like she says, you know, you write yourself, you, you know, R-I-G-H-T, you write yourself, you, you know, so you write yourself right, you know, so you, you, you become more contained as an individual, your uh -huh. boat to cross the water doesn't have any more leak so you're starting you know so then we have yoga practice we have meditation practice we have creative practices we have writing practices we do right. good exercises we're strengthening the ego so that we can start being strong enough to enter into a dialogue with the unconscious contents that are harassing us right. so now we have a more sense of a boundary of who we are our ego's healthier now we can start having a relationship with the shadow the integration with the shadow is the first stage in the development of the process of individuation which is the process of self-realization you can't really go anywhere if you haven't integrated your shadow sure. and and in order to do that work a good strong sense of self is essential and so then we have our practices does that make sense absolutely absolutely because by by just doing um as simple as it sounds, but but just by writing every morning, uh, like Julia Cameron recommends, we actually beginning to see ourselves um, on pages and actually um, understand what works, what doesn't work, where we are trouble, what moves us, what rocks us too hard, what what do we like, and then um, we become more established in our system as we begin to interact with the world. And then as working through astrology and you know having sessions with uh, psychoanalysis, we begin then integrating all the archetypes and, and actually start working because, but first step first is actually to see ourselves for who we truly are. And the best way to do it is through um, writing, you know. <laughs> And 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 I so mean, then, anything that is creative that it takes you out of the streamline of I must I should I have to. Well, then we come full circle into our discussion. Then you can see how a teaching of, you know, of the ego as a problem, how destructive that can be, and how porous the individual becomes. So then one. Without the strong ego, we practice meditation and we become overwhelmed by unconscious content so that there's kind of a possession that becomes established. You know, the glassy eyes, you know, the, the kind of dissociation that occurs when I don't understand the value of the ego. So then rejecting the ego because it's not spiritual is actually a problem that we have in our society. And so that's what Jung was always so mad at theosophy and anthroposophy always said, you know, because he saw that really, if you want to develop a relationship with the world, the spirit, and not become overwhelmed by it. And so we need a strong ego. So what is that like being overwhelmed by the unconscious? You oh, know? In my, in my experience, it, uh, a complete shutdown takes place. You literally, uh, it can be uh, a friend of mine uh, experienced a sleep paralysis. Um, I always go so quiet that I don't even know I, I actually exist. I do everything, I operate, but I become so um, quiet, such quietitude settles within my system that I, I literally cannot move. I'm, not, I'm no longer present. I'm encapsulated myself. 
um, because it just cannot sustain the pressure that is taking place because it just simply cannot comprehend. It's, it's uncomprehendable for the ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are different stages of psychosis, really. Mm -hmm. Correct, of course. of course. And 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 from a purely mystical perspective or 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 religious perspective, psychosis is a state of possession. So we become possessed by the archetype instead of being in service to the archetype. So in a healthy consciousness, the consciousness is in relation, strong ego in a devotional relationship with the archetype versus a weak ego that gets overwhelmed by archetype. Huh. And so that's the great danger of, of psychedelics and other drugs like that is that really um, you become possessed by the archetypal structure. You start identifying and being possessed by the archetype of the shaman instead of like, um, like Hoyt Axton says, he says, uh, everybody wants a free ride to heaven, but nobody wants to make the climb, you know? And so then, then, then not taking free shortcuts. It's the same thing with pharmaceuticals. They give you a sense that your conflict has been resolved, but really the 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 effects and what it does to you is that actually you become possessed. You can see a lot of people that are under a lot of these uh, psychic suppressant are actually lose vitality. And they lose presence, you know. And so, so if you can't sleep at night, or if you're haunted by some devils, you got to do the work of strengthening your ego, and then you can approach these things and engage in a discussion. And of course, in order to do that, you need guidance from someone who Always. can help you through that day. Just wanted to say, uh, in, if you did, you know, try to take the route as uh, as psychedelic. You have to be supported in your process. You have to be able to actually see for what it is rather than go into the fantasy life uh, world that your mind has created. Absolutely. Well, I I I think that um I'm I'm personally, you know, because one, you know, I was born in the 60s and you know in the 50s and I did I did um I did, my fair share. <laughs> I did my fair, I did my fair share of psychedelics. Sure, sure. And 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 then I realized that what psychedelics do is they create a state of sublimation. Sure. And we dis we actually dissociate from the shadow. We don't integrate it. Well, we don't. See it it takes us away from it rather than actually allowing it to come forward, which what we want. Exactly. We want, we want to be able to be a strong enough, and that's what we're talking about: healthy ego. Be strong enough and accommodating enough. Be a wiser um, parent, if you will, uh, the one that holds the child that needs to come through within you and actually uh, be integrated and actually be. You need to be strong enough to hold it. And since you and you are, are doing this process and you and you are doing this work, you need to be, you know, solid in your uh, in your ground uh, in order for you to embrace what is happening and what is showing up. Um, and um, listen, I'm enjoying the ride as far as I'm concerned. It hasn't been easy, and uh, I don't think it's. Um, I'm embracing it, but I see how archetypes show up in a such a thin fog veil when they show their signs that if you are not ready, if you're not um, embracing as it arises and inviting constantly an invitation of your emotions, constantly invitations of positive or negative emotions that are arising within you, you will you 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 lose it. You you it slip through you. And this is where you come in and you say, well, 
um, you know, it's terrorizing you, it's possessing you, and you want to go and take uh, psychedelics, and then what you are is you're sublimating it. Why? Because, well, you feel well, better. You, and you don't have to go look into it anymore. But, but it is important for the ego to look into it, to become, to step into the self. Absolutely. Right? The, the problem with the psychedelic is it actually makes the ego stronger. Um, I'm, I'm not sorry. It makes the shadow stronger and right. the possession more difficult to see. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, then one is much better served to develop a strong practice, you know, writing and like that, and then develop dream work because the dream work is where these unconscious fragments of the personality that need to be brought back to consciousness <coughs> they personified the shadows personified in the dream world mm. by engaging in dialogue then you know so basically Jung taught a technique of self-realization based on dream analysis you work with your dreams you analyze your dreams, you work with someone that helps you understand your dreams and your dreams will guide you to the healing process. And that's what he discovered in Bergosi Mental Hospital is he discovered that he could cure psychosis by working with the person's dreams. And when the person, the client would come to him understanding their dreams, they would, he would release them from the mental hospital. He says, you're cured. You know, so here there's a man that worked in a mental hospital at the early days of 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 psychology, and he cured people from psychosis through dream analysis, and that's why he became famous because he was having success. He was having so much success that in the course of his career, 60 years of career, he analyzed 90,000 dreams and he became one of the most famous healers in the the 19th, in the 20th century. He made the, the, you know, in the 50s, he made the cover of Time magazines as the man of the year, you know, and, 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 and he touched, but then, you know, in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, shortly after he left, his work was still really, really popular. And then now, you know, all, you know, almost, you know, 80 years after he left, we kind of lost connection with who that guy was, you know, and what he did and what his techniques are. So we see a great return to astrology from the young people and also a return to Jung and those two astrology and dream analysis that's what the healer dreamer is about we use astrology to map out the problems in the personality and then we use dream work as a way of integrating these broken contents and so those two things working together next level <laughs> That's what we do. Yes, that is what we do. Absolutely. Martin, this has been great. This was fun, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We start, we press the record button and we says, oh, we're just going to. Uh, 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 let's uh, let's we, do a uh, practice run. <laughs> a, 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 a practice run and the practice one turned out into being the video. Yes. That was, sweet. <laughs> that was very, very sweet. Thank you for this and thank you. Um, for joining us in this conversation if you're still watching and uh, please do subscribe to the channel the healer and the dreamer we're going to continue this the next um, one is going to be about the shadow and we'll hear about what Jung says about the integration of the shadow uh, thanks for joining us and thank you uh, Ina for joining me and for having the 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 courage to jump in on screen like this and <laughs> And uh, so much fun. Absolutely. Um, cool. Over and out. Woohoo!